Fine. You win. I tried emulating games on an Android phone. A little backstory. I love these little portable emulation devices. Most of the games that I enjoy playing are small, underpowered retro games, and these devices are perfect for that, except every single one of these portable emulators has like one or two things that's preventing it from being the end-all, be-all in portable emulation. And inevitably, whenever I talk about one of these emulators, I am inundated with comments saying, just use an Android phone. Or worse yet, just use a Vita. Hey, hey guy, do you know how much a Vita is right now? And I'm not really interested in using touch controls or strapping a whole ass controller to my phone. Also, uh, I'm, I'm an iOS user. I know, I, I don't wanna be the one that breaks up the family group chat. And then I remembered that I bought a Google Pixel specifically for playing games on. And I went on a little trip recently and I decided to give this thing a whirl. And I was a bit surprised by how far it's come since the last time I dabbled. With the right hardware and only one app, you can have an easy all-in-one portable emulator that rivals some of the best stuff on the market. It's way less of a pain in the ass to set up than I expected, but there are some hurdles and it's definitely not for everybody. But you might be surprised like I was. This video is sponsored by Lumen. Okay, hey. yeah. Yeah, it's enough. I, I wear makeup in a lot of my videos. I've been terrible to my skin. As a man, it's hard to find out anything about a skincare routine. I went through a phase once where I was like, you know what, screw it, I'll just get what the women get. And then I was bombarded by a litany of all different products that did all of these different things. I just want like a few things that at least make me feel like I'm trying to do something, you know? Lumen delivers high quality and easy to use skincare products right to you. They set you up with a skincare routine that works best for what you want out of your skin. I requested the Correction Trio set with the exfoliating rub, the moisturizing balm, and the dark circle defense so I don't look like Steve Buscemi anymore. Their products are dermatologically tested, cruelty free, paraben free, and TSA approved. You can get yourself set up with a skincare routine by going to luminskin.com slash in slash wolfden, spelled like that, or just go to the link in the description below. And you can get these cute little free versions of all of their stuff. All you have to do is pay for the shipping. So go to the link in the description below and hopefully maybe we can get our skin to look a little more like this. That's not a filter. If you already have an Android phone, then you're like 70% on your way to emulation bliss. But if you're like me, and you have an iPhone, I'm not sure that shilling out the couple of hundred dollars is more worth it than just getting a cheap portable emulator. This is a Google Pixel 3a XL. I got it to play Game Pass games on. It cost me about $280 back in September, but now you can find it for just $173. I'm sure you can even find a cheaper Android phone with similar specs. I just decided to go with a Google Pixel because I know that Pixels are good and I know that Android supports Pixels for a really long time and most apps that you'd wanna play support the Google Pixel. Now, you can just use basically any Bluetooth controller or even a Nintendo Switch Pro controller. You can find clips for most controllers that will hold your phone. I have one for an Xbox controller and this will work just fine. So if you have an Android phone and a Bluetooth controller already, then you're set. But I just, I, I just wouldn't consider this portable. I definitely do not want to throw this in my backpack. Hey, it fits. This isn't going to be my daily driver phone. I want something that I could just throw in my backpack because I'm already going to have a dedicated phone in my pocket. So there's two controllers that I've talked about before. There's the Razer Kishi and the Razer Jungle Cat. I like a lot about the way that the Razer Jungle Cat looks and feels. 
It tries its best to be just like Joy-Con, turning your Android phone into basically a Nintendo Switch with Joy-Con rails and everything. The Jungle Cat is two separate units that require two separate Bluetooth connections and need to be charged separately. It should have at least come with a USB-C splitter cable or something so you can charge them both at the same time. But no, it doesn't. So on my trip, I had to charge the Google Pixel, the left Joy-Con and the right Joy-Con separately because I only had one USB-C cable. And this thing doesn't fit all phones. It comes with just three different cases for three different phones, none of which are the Google Pixel 3a XL. So I had to make some slight modifications with a knife and a can opener. It's ugly, and I had to sacrifice the integrity of the case, but it works. The Kishi, on the other hand, is bulkier, but connects directly into the phone's USB-C port, so it doesn't require a Bluetooth connection or its own charge or anything. It also supports most phones. It even has a USB-C pass-through, so you can charge your phone while playing. Neither of these controllers let you access the headphone jack on your phone, but at least the Kishi will let you use a USB-C adapter. Plus, it's cheaper. Anyway, this isn't even the important bit. This is stuff I already figured out when I was making that video about using an Android phone as like a little Game Pass machine. But the impetus of this whole video was playing emulators on here. And I jumped into a whole new world of portable emulation. The reasons why I've been so hesitant about using an Android phone for portable emulation is because one, I completely forgot that I had an Android phone. I use an iPhone every day. And two, I like to do the bare minimum work when I pick up a device and want to start playing on it. So in the past, when I've used Android phones for emulation before, I've had to tweak a lot of settings, download all different types of apps and, and get a controller paired and then configure all the controllers on that controller or figure out how the touchscreen controls work. Each emulator has different settings. Each game has different settings within that emulator. Honestly, the first thing that I did was download RetroArch. I don't really like RetroArch that much. It's an all-in-one emulator, but it has a really clunky UI and it's got a million different settings that seemingly do little to nothing to optimize things. And doing something as simple as tweaking some controls has given me problems in the past. But everything just kind of worked? And it worked good? I was shocked? It even picked up my Jungle Cat controller automatically and all of the controls worked great out of the box? With one minor exception that we'll get into. Let me back up. Before I did any of this, I connected the phone to my Mac and used Android file transfer to transfer my entire ROMs folder over to the phone. You're probably gonna wanna make sure you have file transfer over USB set up in the Android phone settings. If your Android phone has a micro SD card slot, that's way easier. You can just pop that micro SD card out, pop it in a computer and transfer your games that way. Either way, no matter how you do it, that part's very simple, which is more than I could say for a lot of portable emulators. RetroArch does require you to download cores for each individual emulator. I'm not sure why it doesn't just give them to you, but you can download them individually within the app itself, but you have to select the ones you want one at a time. I actually downloaded them all using my iPhone as a hotspot. It's all these little unnecessary steps that really aggravate me. But once I did all that, I was able to play GBA, PS1, and even N64 games with pretty much no issues. And everything was running great and I was having a blast until my controller started to drift a little bit and then I left the app and entered it again and then the game crashed and then I lost all my progress in Mega Man Legends and that pissed me off like a lot. That's another issue with the Jungle Cat. Since it's wireless, sometimes it forgets to send the signal that I have let go of a button. So a character might just walk endlessly to the left until I press left again. I'll remind you that this controller looks cool and feels cool, but it's kind of impractical. It's like over-engineered. So RetroArch is fine and can turn your phone into a pretty decent and highly capable portable emulator. But I'm happy to report that there's a much easier app out there now. It's called Lemuroid. Lemuroid? Lemuroid. Also, is it RetroArch or RetroArch? Lemuroid is based off of RetroArch and gives you all of the cores already. So you 
barely have to set anything up. All you have to do is set what folder your ROMs are in. Then it organizes them and even downloads the box art for your games. And it will just work. Everything runs exactly as good as it does in RetroArch because it is using RetroArch to emulate the games. This is just a front end that makes things easier to set up and navigate, and it looks way prettier too. Now the trade-off is that there aren't that many settings. So if you want to change something, there isn't much to tweak. But it has the essentials, and what it has is really all that you need. By default, it tries to emulate the original look of the systems, like for example, Game Boy Advance had a pixel border effect that actually looked kind of cool. It looked like a Game Boy Advance screen, but I prefer the clean pixel look. And you can turn that on in the global settings menu. This emulator even has a fast forward option in every single system which is really handy when you're trying to record footage for a video and you don't want to watch an opening cutscene. The controls also just worked, but if they didn't, they were easy enough to remap. And this is where I came into another issue with RetroArch. Somehow, my Z button stopped working in N64. It was mapped weird, and I couldn't figure out how to remap it because it seemed fine in the settings, but it was fine in Lemroid, and if it wasn't, it would have been way easier to remap anyway. Lemuroid even has DS emulation. I didn't like how it had the DS screens oriented on top of each other like this. There's so much more screen real estate on the sides that it can use. But the only way to get the screen side by side was to switch the DS core to Melon DS. After that, it worked great. This is the only game core that you can change in Lemuroid, and I guess that's the reason. The other one is probably more for performance, but this one worked just fine. So, if you want to emulate NES all the way up to frickin' DS, then get Lemuroid on your Android phone. It's super simple to set up and is way more than enough to turn your Android phone into an emulation powerhouse. But, this phone is capable of a little more than that. So, I downloaded ReDream for Dreamcast emulation, Dolphin for GameCube, and Citra for 3DS emulation. ReDream runs awesome and required basically no setup. Dolphin runs okay, a little choppy and required some controller setup. Not the best GameCube emulation. And Citra was less choppy and required some controller configuration, but it was definitely playable. Now this is awesome. I can play so much stuff on here now. A little more than what I can play on all of these other portable emulators, but this isn't exactly simple anymore. At minimum, I have four different apps that I need to use. So this all-in-one portable console isn't so all-in-one anymore. But there's another thing you can download. Dig is an emulation front end. You can get it to look really cool if you want. Dig is basically just a UI. So when you click on a game, it will just open up that game in whatever emulator you have. So if you have a RetroArch, it'll just open the game up in RetroArch. If you want to play a 3DS game, it will open it up in Citra. Once you get it set up, it can be a really cool way to navigate and play through your whole retro game library. But it requires a little bit of setup, something I can't be bothered to do. I also noticed that opening up something like Citra through Dig made things all weird. Getting to Citra's settings had an extra layer of bullshittery around it. It's easier to adjust your emulation settings first, and once it's all set up, then configure Dig to be your front end. But it's also easier to just click Citra if you wanna play a 3DS game. So don't get me wrong, it could still be a major pain in the ass to get all of your games to run on your Android phone, but it doesn't have to be. A combination of Lemuroid and some of these Razer controllers fixes a lot of problems that I've had with using your phone as an emulator. I did have some complications with some other systems outside of Lemuroid, but I don't wanna knock this setup for those complications. Those other systems are basically just bonuses. All my other portable emulators don't have 3DS capabilities. Hell, they barely even have DS capabilities. So yes, this might be the best portable emulator that I own right now, and some of you guys were right to tell me to quote, just use an Android phone. But at $200 for the phone itself and another $70 for some sort of Razer controller situation, 
I'm not sure that this is any better than just getting yourself a dedicated handheld like the RG351B. I'm not even sure how much this thing is anymore. $115 on Amazon, $110 on Retro Mimi. It's around that. Of course, we'll have affiliate links to everything that we talk about in the description below that helps support the channel. If you have an Android phone already, then you absolutely already have a powerful, perfectly capable emulation device in your pocket already. Get yourself a Razer Kishi and you're good to go. Or something similar, it doesn't even have to be this. But if you're an iPhone man like myself, I'm not so sure that buying a whole ass other phone is worth it just for the portable emulation. Especially with all these other super powerful portable emulators that are coming out that promise a lot. The Ein Odin is in the crowdfunding phase right now. This is from a company no one has ever heard of before. Don't get it confused with the Aya, the company that made the Neo, because it's not that. It looks like it'll be powerful enough for GameCube games, just crowdfund at your own risk. Also, the Valve Steam Deck is gonna be an emulation powerhouse, probably. Of course, that's not something we can confirm until we get it in our grubby hands. I never like to buy something in hopes it'll have great modding capabilities, but all signs are pointing to, yes, it'll be great for emulation. So I do like this setup, but that's because I already had it. And if you don't already have something like this, then these other portable emulators are still a great option and at a fraction of the price and there's also all this other stuff that's still coming out. For now though, I think I'll just try to beat Mega Man Legends on this thing. Anyone uh, know how to move my save from RetroArch into Lemuroid? What do you guys think about using your Android phone as a portable emulation device? Back in the day, I used to, I remember I played a lot of Pokemon Ruby on the toilet on my Android phone when I used to have an Android phone and I would use the screen as, as a controller because Pokemon, it doesn't really matter. But if you want to play anything that requires reactor time, you're going to need some sort of controller like this. Anyway, leave your thoughts in the comments below. Add me on Twitter, any and all this social media garbage. Maybe someone like Lemuroid could help you make better use of your Android phone. I want to give a shout out to Mr. Sujano, who has a video on Lemuroid that I use to get myself set up with Lemuroid. So if you want to get your phone set up, you should watch that video. Also, if you're interested in Dig, which is that front end for all of the different emulators you can have on your Android phone, check out ETA Prime. ETA Prime has a lot of great videos on emulation and he has one specifically on Dig if you wanna get that set up. Like I said before, you can get your Android phone to look pretty cool. Dig is probably what you can use to make this thing a dedicated handheld. But instead of doing that, I'll just click on the apps. Thank you very much. Also, the last emulation YouTuber I'll shout out is Retro Game Core. Like two weeks ago, I had him on the podcast and we had a nice little conversation about all these different portable emulators and whatnot. So check out that podcast over on youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast if you want some more of us talking about portable emulation devices. Okay, just move the camera then. Anyway, thank you Lumen for helping sponsor this video. Don't forget to check them out at the link in the description below and thank you for helping keep my skin glowing. But the most important thing that you can do to help support this channel is just subscribe right here and get those notifications so you know when we post new videos and share this video with a friend, Rue. A friend who maybe has an Android phone and doesn't have any of these portable emulators. Thank you very much. Have yourself a very good one.